Yes, we can, Anthony. Awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, we're looking at, um, at a whole new way of, of us existing as, um, as Africans in this, in this new world. Um, so, yeah, so let me tell you, let me just talk a bit more about Africa's talking before we get right into the presentation. Um, as a communications and payments company, we provide APIs. So what APIs basically mean, we, we provide a platform where developers can connect their applications um, onto our platform to access services like SMS, uh, payments, USSD, voice infrastructure, um, and, and, and basically all these services that telcos offer, including mobile money, um, layering applications on top of it, and then businesses consume it, um, helping uh, just simplify processes uh, going forward. Um, yeah, and uh, just, just to give you some, uh, some stats that, that for us uh, are pretty, we're pretty happy about. So over 6,000 businesses on our platform so far, and about 40,000 developers are building on top of our platform. All of this in Africa. And we're super happy that we, we serve the African market and we are, we're seeing a lot of, a lot of growth um, in regards to businesses automating and uh, making this, this digital uh, transformation. Right. So one of the things that, that, is, that is pretty clear has been very clear over the past couple of years is that doing digital business in Africa is, is very different from what you will see in the West. So when you're talking about um, um, like stuff like PayPal, you're talking about credit cards, you're talking about um, Apple Pay and all these fancy things, these things don't exist in Africa. In Africa, we, are still, we, still, we still face the challenge of like people are not using smartphones the same way you guys are using smartphones on the other side. So we have to, um, we have to be able to, to capture the attention of the user where they are, right? So one of the things that, that, that we, we've seen is a dramatic uptake of um, telco services. So SMS for marketing is really powerful. Um, if there's one thing you will notice is that if, even if your friends send you messages on WhatsApp, um, if your, your telco sends you a message that your balance is low, you'll never miss that message compared to what you find on WhatsApp, right? Um, you have to be connected. The challenge is that you have to be connected. You have to have a device that supports WhatsApp and a couple of other things. It's, it's, it, there are a lot of requirements to this. Um, and during this COVID situation, for sure, we're gonna notice that a lot more people are gonna be on the internet more than, than before. However, how they use the internet is also an important, an important aspect to be, to be considering. Um, people do buy bundles a lot, but then the difference is they, they use their bundles differently, uh, mainly for communication um, with the family and friends compared to um, probably buying things off Amazon or, or things like that. It's, it's not happening as much um, um, as, as, as expected, right? So what we want to, what, what we want to do is for those people who are not able to access the services easily, uh, buying uh, and selling online, how do, how, are they, how do we enable them to have a much more simple experience um, on your services and your products, right? Um, yeah, so let me, let's go over a couple of, of challenges that we end up um, seeing on the continent, just, um, just, just to highlight the, the kind of challenges we're trying to, to, to kind of like uh, manage. So we have low connectivity issues. Um, generally across Africa, you don't see uh, 4G as the main standard. 3G is, is mostly what is, big, what is available. It offers decent speeds, but also having a phone that supports 4G um, is also something pretty rare, especially for the larger populace. If within um, higher income areas like cities, you can see a lot more 4G, 4G enabled phones and things like that. Then as you, as you go deeper into the into the, the kind of like low income markets um, outside the cities, you end up seeing a lot, a lot less uh, powerful phones and, and things like that. This is also, this is also induced by the low purchasing power, right? Um, a, a large, a large section of the society is still uh, within uh, a, space, a space where they have to be really conscious about how they spend. So for them, it's spending more on essentials, 
and trying to keep the, the purchasing um, uh, manageable, uh, generally because of that people purchasing power. And then also the challenge of insufficient infrastructure. We're looking at a, at a space where we are not able to, uh, you may not be able, you're trying to deliver something to your client, but you may not be able to deliver that, that package simply because maybe the roads are bad at some point. Or um, there isn't even a service in the first place that helps you move things from one point to another. Um, yeah, so like infrastructure now on, on those two levels where there's, there's the hard infrastructure, which is like roads and things and electricity, and also now looking at as well as services built on top of that, that facilitate um, easier uh, movement of goods and services. Yeah, so I think for, for now that we know that business here is unique, um, not the same as, as in the West, and we have to be able to still engage our customers, serve our customers, and, and try to be as, as efficient as possible. Uh, for any business, if a business is basically, a, when you break it down, it's, it's processes coming together. And what you're trying to do is make those processes as efficient as possible. So for, for, from where, where we stand as Africa Stalking is we're trying to see how we can help businesses as well as developers to be able to create these, to automate some of these processes and make it easier for them to be able to engage with our customers. The goal here is just how do we keep our customers happy and engaged, right? That's the, that's the first and most fundamental question. Um, so our SMS product is one of those ways where we are able to kind of like um, circumnavigate some of the challenges that, that, that a business will end up experiencing um, during this time, uh, reaching out to, to, um, to their customers. So SMS is one of the most powerful solutions um, we've, we've seen so far. SMS is one of those services we call ubiquitous simply because it, it, it can do anything quite literally. Um, even when you sign into your Google account, when you sign into your Facebook account, when you're signing into your Instagram account, and you have two-factor two authentication enabled, you have to be able to receive an SMS. Even on WhatsApp, when you're setting it up, you still need SMS to be able to verify your identity. So there are a lot of, uh, a lot of services that still rely on SMS still today, um, including banks and telcos themselves uh, to inform you especially. And you can take advantage of that same platform to do the same things. Um, reach out to customers, um, offering these deals and services, um, deep links into applications. So if you already have an existing application, you can use SMS as a way to send users to a particular page in your app. Um, for example, you're selling uh, shoes, for example, and you want to inform your customers that there's this brand new hot um, shoe line that just come out, um, SMS would be the fastest way to reach them and almost a sure bet way of engaging them um, going forward. Um, so for, for, for many businesses, they, don't, they may not have like um, a developer immediately to, to build out um, a, like an SMS tool that you can use, but there are already companies that have built on top of Africa Stalking that would be very useful. Um, to, to, to a business is looking for an out of the box solution. So one of them is called Tejado IO. Uh, you can check them out. They are quite they are quite impressive. Um, they are quite impressive in what they do. Um, yeah, and another, another way you can kind of use SMS. So SMS comes in two components. There you have uh, what we call bulk SMS, um, which basically allows you to send like a large a ton of SMSs to a specific group of people. Um, and receive reports on on, on what on on, um, on that, and as well as two-way SMS. Two-way SMS allows you to have a connect like a direct conversation with a client automatically. So this is similar to what you would see as intercom bots, customer um, relation bots uh, on on websites and applications, where there are some automated responses, either to collect feedback or to just. Um, yeah, just engage the user about a particular topic, right? Um, or even when the user wants to ask for, for a call from your customer support center, uh, two SMS can enable that initial interaction for, for you to find out like, where does this fall in regards to, to customer support? So you'll see in customer support, you have maybe this an issue with the delivery, it's an issue with an order, it's an issue with, so a, a two SMS bot can allow you to be able to, to, to create buckets for that. And then 
plan how you're going to reach out to the customers based on the priority of the problem, right? Um, so yeah, so the two SMS uh, service just allows to create these really engaging experiences on SMS. All this while, no one has had, has, has had to turn on data or do anything of the sort. Um, anyone, this means anyone can basically access the service. Yeah, um, there's also premium SMS. Premium SMS is a very interesting product. Um, it's a bit expensive to set up at, at times, but it's one of the, it's, its benefits are quite useful, especially if you're a company that's looking to um, sell digital content. So you're looking to sell uh, music or you're trying to sell videos or you're selling games, uh, game passes. This is one of those things that, that can be really powerful where you can set, um, if someone subscribes to your SDO to your service, they get, um, they get like SMSs from you and they're charged a particular amount on top of the standard SMS charge. And on top of that SMS charge, there's a revenue share that occurs between um, you, the telco and the government um, in terms of just balancing out the taxes involved and things like that. Um, but then at the end of the day, you can basically generate revenue through premium SMS um, by distributing content especially. Uh, we found that uh, that being one of the, the, the bigger ways uh, that people are able to, to kind of like monetize this service. Yeah, you might have seen on the news as well. Uh, sometimes I think back these days, they maybe might be just get some messages on WhatsApp, but like back in the day, uh, news stations used to ask people to um, send in their, their comments or their feedback um, to a particular number. And it was like in Kenya, it was about uh, 10 shillings on top of the normal charge, and there would be a revenue share split, uh, things like that. Yeah, so we've, I mean, we're talking about engaging customers but we also have a bigger problem here for many businesses during this period opening your shop may not uh, may not be possible um, trying to keep um, these and even if you have opened your shop you have to make sure people within the store are keeping a social I should uh, one day 1.5 meter social distance um, you have to they are quite a few restrictions that also hinder how many people can walk how many walk-ins you can have in a day people are already working from home people are moving around much. So you're not able to have the same flow of people into your store. So what you want to do is basically reach them um, where they are, right? Um, and still be able to have this very um, unified experience um, nonetheless. So one of the things that becomes very fascinating um, is asking yourself, or you've been collecting customer data, so you've been, um, They've been coming to your shop or they've been coming to your website and they've been leaving their phone numbers with you. So how do you start using those phone numbers to become the next drivers of, um, of customer engagement, right? So SMS campaigns, as, as, as mentioned uh, before, um, are a really powerful way um, to basically create this very interesting um, flow for yourself where you can be able to track um, Based off an SMS, you see you have a thousand customers, you send a thousand messages to customers. You can be able to take that same data, uh, uh, basically, and see I sent a thousand, um, a thousand messages, and how many people reached out to me via USSD um, later on, right? Because of maybe I was, I was announcing that, um, yeah, if you purchase through purchase something through our USSD option, you'll be able to. Um, I will get a 10% discount uh, during this time. And, and that's what, and, and this is exactly it. So USSD opens up new frontiers for offline customer engagement. So um, USSD is a very powerful tool. It was not previously it was not designed to, um, to actually be user facing, just more for the telcos to kind of like pass data between, between towers. Um, but once they realize the power of it, uh, that you're able to kind of like um, allow somebody to build a custom experience on top of it, it became a, a, a premium tool for them to use to allow customers to check their, their mobile wallet balances, uh, like airtime balances, buy data, um, and any other service that, that they needed. So in the same way that the telco uses it, the, the, the telco just gives a very good, um, idea of what is possible with, with the USSD. So imagine that you're trying to, to run a store um, on Instagram or on, or on 
WhatsApp, where you just uh, you have a WhatsApp business line um, um, open for for for, uh, for purchases and things like that. And someone tells you something about like um, I may not be able to buy from your store because like I'm not on WhatsApp. That, that you've met those people. There are guys who are like I'm on WhatsApp, I'm not anything. Um, but I still wanna like buy your service, buy something from you. Um, USSB offers this experience um, through an educated code, uh, star 845 hash or something like that. And basically this, the, the user will be able to, um, uh, to go through your, your menu, the, your menu, a specific menu you've created for yourself that allows them to access different services, whether it's checking the wallet balance, um, if, you, if you have a wallet, a wallet um, implementation, or even purchase something directly from, from a real SSD. Um, this is this is a this is a an experience we've been watching um, evolve over time, and we we're quite excited to see what um, what opportunities opens up for businesses in Zambia. Um, so, what what can you really like? Um, what really could be created from this? I, I guess I guess is also like um, a really interesting space to, to be on because USSD is one of those very uh, very interesting services that, as said about SMS, you don't actually need any internet to get anything going. Um, all you need is just a phone, any kind of phone, and you can be able to access um, these services. Um, access to services should not be hindered by connectivity. I think, um, especially in, 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 in markets like our, like our uh, the African markets, where a lot of people are still in banks, a lot of people still don't have access to, to uh, financial services, medical services, even educational services. A lot of these things can be provided through, your, through a USSD at a very cheap cost, um, a fraction of the cost of what it would take you to implement a whole website or something of the nature. Now, also this is not to say that you shouldn't build a website or you shouldn't build an application. Um, this is to say this can be a complementary service that allows your business to have way more reach than what you would have had um, if you were focused purely on the online side. Um, yeah, so some interesting use cases we've seen people use USSD for different companies are uh, using USSD for so uh, collecting data and feedback. So we've seen, uh, seen companies do all kinds of research, uh, become platforms for research. So if you've seen any research companies before, um, they need to collect data from, uh, from, from users um, in a particular locale and they need to be able to do it efficiently. Um, not everybody will have an app that they can record voice memos and send it in via WhatsApp. They, sometimes even through, we can record through voice, not on the USSD itself, but um, using our voice products as well. Um, but we are seeing people that kind of just basically collect feedback. You can type in, um, uh, fill out a questionnaire basically on USSD. In fact, USSD makes a lot of sense for questionnaires. Um, close the questionnaires with like a finite options that you can choose. Um, we, it, we've also seen it to register users for services. So even for banks, they're watching banks do this um, and a couple of, of other companies where you're able to uh, quickly register even for a conference, for example, you're, you're a conference organizer and you want to register people as quickly as possible. You could either go the normal route of uh, sending out Google Forms, uh, or type forms or a custom form on our website. Or alternatively, you can just use USSD, which will capture the, the person's phone number, the, the, the email address, their name, um, and how many tickets they're buying, and even enable a, a, a mobile money option. Um, or, or, yeah, like just create the, the, the ticket for the purchase um, in, in general. So I think that there's a lot of interesting ways you can kind of go around our registration, um, especially through USSD. Uh, creates a very unique experience. Um, um, that, that might surprise people. Uh, but I, I think once once someone sees what it can do, it's quite it's quite impressive. Um, also, creating query services. So you may have you may find yourself in a situation where, um, as a business, you're kind of like um, let's say you're delivering things from one point to another. Um, the user wants to know where my things are um, along the route. Then a USSD could be a very interesting way for you to. Um, easily have a querying service that can go like um, find out where my order is and it can tell you where along the way in the process at the least of the location but through the process where it is so uh, currently being shipped or 
uh, and the timeline that's associated with that, and then maybe providing at the end like your career, your um, yeah, your career is about to arrive, um, and things like that. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunity here, and and the, and the interesting thing is like for all these things, they're easily tied together and can work together really well. So for USC and SMS and all our other services, they're just different parts of the same solution. It just depends what your business specifically needs if, so that you can tie all these things together and turn them into one seamless experience. Um, yeah, so I think talking about like um, purchases and deliveries, purchases and deliveries are a, a really interesting subject because end of the day, we can engage customers online, um, engage them also offline through SMS. We can engage customers through USSD, um, have them uh, accessing our service, buying things, and doing all and doing all these um, interactions with us. Um, however, if we are not able to do the last mile, the last part of of this process, which is now getting the products, especially for physical products, um, getting the products to the customer at the end of the day, then we kind of like have lost, have, have kind of broken the chain. Um, Delivery definitely, as, as mentioned, in, in, um, as one of the challenges that, that we end up facing is infrastructure. If, if this is not set up, um, it's still like very difficult. However, um, in especially watching what's happening in the Kenyan markets as well as um, in the Tanzanian markets, uh, seen generally around, or even in, um, in Uganda, we're watching uh, motorcycles becoming the key. Um, motorcycle riders becoming the key engine for uh, for this last mile delivery that didn't exist before. So previously what would happen is you have uh, pickup centers, which are not bad, it's generally it's not bad, but what, what it becomes really, really challenging for for you to ship loads of things um, to, to, these, to these centers. Um, and it may, it may also be like um, a health risk as well, um, having people come into a particular space uh, to pick up to pick up goods and services. However, through um, the, these last mile delivery services, uh, they can take care of the of the health risk um, and kind of like imply to themselves. And the customer still receives their goods, and they, it's, it's kind of like a, a much more seamless interaction with the customer compared to um, the pickup spot um, method. Yeah, so. Um, mobile money regulations, uh, mobile money, we were talking about mobile money, but mobile money is a really complicated topic. And I know in Zambia, we are, the, the system is not as uh, robust as it, it, it is in, 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 some, in some other countries. So the, the, the thing here is if mo mobile money has a challenge of critical mass, if not enough people are using it, then not enough um, services will be live to, to be able to consume it as a service. Um, so. Cash and delivery is still one of the biggest ways um, you can kind of like make it make it seamless. Although you're looking at um, the challenge of um, kind of passing around money during this COVID time, um, so automated automated um, automated payments through cards is a, is a possibility. However, still um, we kind of have to just take take the take the precaution around um, the last mile delivery. Um, there, are, there are a couple of of businesses that that we'll talk about that are kind of like providing these services as well. Um, so, but anyway, like just, just focusing on ensuring that this is as seamless as humanly possible for a customer, um, that, that, that should be the goal. Um, if the customer doesn't have to leave the, their premises to go out into the world, um, that will kind of like generally uh, ensure that your service is as, as tip top as possible. Yeah, yeah. So as we talk about carrier services, so just allowing this this um, this uh, purchase cycle to happen um, through a third party provider, uh, simplify, reducing risk on your end as well. Uh, you don't need to manage a whole um, a whole fleet of um, motorcycle riders across across. But but it's, it is a good business though. Um, so just just to put it out there. Um, yeah, so that party providers is a free delivery and Tigo, um, I think, are doing something great in Tanzania, in, uh, in Zambia. And it's one of those things that we need to be, is, is, the, is, a, is, a, is essential to just finishing off this last cycle for businesses, a platform that businesses, um, any business can use to, to finish off the last time. 
Yeah. So um, I think for for me, as, as some some final thoughts is um, technology and and business are are one. Um, business, as I mentioned before, businesses are about processes, and literally, technology is just about processes. It's about simplifying processes. That's the whole core. That's all the whole core of technology. And, and seeing more businesses rise up and, and pick up different tools. Um, Africa Stocking is one of these uh, business dev and developer focused tools that you could use to simplify your flow um, as a business and your processes as a business. Um, but there are so many, so many other APIs and so many other opportunities that, kind of are, that, kind of, um, that are kind of available as well. Um, it's about taking all these little pieces putting them together and customizing it to your process. So that's when a developer might be necessary, when you want to be really, really particular about um, the process you want to build. Um, but most of the time you might find yourself in a place where there are out of the box tools, like as I mentioned, Teja, uh, one, of our, well, our, um, one of the companies that has built a of Africa stocking. Um, yeah, and, and that's also another business opportunity as well, I guess. Um, kind of like building on top of Africa stocking and providing this, uh, our APIs as a service to other people again. Um, I think it, that, that's also another interesting space to explore. But nonetheless, it's kind of like uh, just focusing on ensuring that uh, as a business, you have the, the most, efficient, uh, most efficient processes um, just to make sure that you're able to reach your customers um, in the right way. Um, and you're making life easy for the customers. It's uh, customers always right. Um, they may not be um, they may not be the most easiest people to work with, um, but they are right. They 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 drive your business, and they're the, they're the people we, we are building for, and we're trying to make these services for. So um, yeah, just having that in mind. Um, yeah, I think that's 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 it for me. Um, I'll open the floor to to any questions. All right. Thank you so much, Anthony, for, for that uh, informative presentation. And um, I'm here thinking to myself on, um, you know, as in there's a lot of things that have happened since the time, and even like the use of uh, social media, and it's a good thing that you even touched on, just reminding us that um, uh, USSD platforms still work, because I still receive those SMSs uh, from telcos and from banks. Uh, so it's just a constant reminder that, you know, as in USSD is still, is still alive and kicking. Uh, for now, we'll open it up to Q and A. Uh, so, if you have any questions, please uh, type your questions in the chat, or you can use the you can use the tab uh, Q uh, Q and A tab to write your question. Um, but for the meantime, I have a question for you. Um, uh, I have a question for you, Anthony, and 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 it's uh, I, I I don't know if you came across this um, this this uh, a blog post. Um, it's uh, it's it's WhatsApp launching a digital payment. Um, Payment, payment, uh, payment in in Brazil, and the same is that the better it's uh, the better testing testing phase right now. I think it's been launched in uh, in, in in several countries like uh, India as well, um, and also like also Facebook Pay as well as also coming in. So something that's also in line with um, with the use of use of USSD, and then now that social media platforms are also taking advantage of uh, of, of of using those tools as payment. I don't know what your thoughts are on um, how USSD uh, will be relevant, especially when it comes to uh, where the where the where the world is going now. That um, where the where the where the country or maybe where the world is going with the new digital, is it that they're trying to phase phase out the USSD uh, to accommodate social media platforms as well to to start engaging uh, payment platforms? Because frankly, we receive a lot of um, um, when it comes to mobile money. That's way of USSD. So how are you seeing the future being uh, shaped uh, when, it, when it comes to um, this, this news that uh, WhatsApp will now have payments and Facebook has pay? And how, how is this, um, how, 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 would you, how, how would you say that, the, the, how is the future shaping for, or how is the future looking for the USSD um, a solution for, 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 for SMEs or companies? Yeah, I think um, I see USSD as, um, it's a good fallback, uh, it's a good fallback mechanism for the time being. Uh, it's still a reality that everyone will end up being online. Um, maybe at the end of this day, we'll have like the 8.5 billion people on earth literally all connected and that will be amazing and we'll kind of nullify the need for, 
something like USSD. However, this does not, um, does not take away from what Africa Stocking is also doing. So we are looking at um, launching uh, WhatsApp APIs. So they should be out uh, next week, hopefully. Um, and we'll be sharing a lot about um, what we're thinking about this, this new frontier, uh, for especially around WhatsApp, um, uh, RC, Google RCS, which if you've heard of before, is the replacement to SMS um, as a protocol. Um, we are also looking into Telegram and combining all of these um, online channels because also the challenge with online channels is, is one thing. It's like, as much as I have WhatsApp, I also have Telegram, I have Facebook Messenger, I have a ton of, like, of, of, of messaging apps where I'm reaching out to different people, but I still want to have like, a seamless experience. Um, so I think one of the ways, for, especially for businesses, you want to be able to have conversations with customers on all those separate channels and still be able to kind of have, um, make payment, they're doing payments, they're talking to you about customer support stuff and track all those things. So these, all these are things that we, we are kind of looking into the future um, and, and seeing how we can design for businesses as we move into this new digital age. It's not that we'll remain with USSD forever. I don't expect myself in 2030 to be dialing a USSD, but, <laughs> Um, but it's a good fallback system that allows us in the meantime, before we get to that uh, stage where everyone is on WhatsApp and everyone is online, um, it's a good fallback and, and serves the purpose, especially um, it's, the reason, <laughs> it's the reason for the season, I guess, um, just trying to figure out how to, how to manage our, our current confusing status uh, in COVID. Okay, thank you so much for, it's like you've already done your background work and the future work as well and how things are going to, are going to work. Uh, so it's well positioned. Um, there's a question from, uh, from, from Silmesi, and uh, Silmesi would like to find out, what are your thoughts on USSD slash uh, SMS in relation to literacy levels in the region? Um, um, I think that's, that's, a really, that's actually a very good question. So one of the things we've seen um, um, I think now playing around with the USS technology for, for a couple, the past couple of years is that this is customizing this for local languages is not as difficult. Um, I think there are several implementations I've seen that allow someone to choose a particular language before they begin. Um, so if you speak um, your mother tongue, it can be rendered in that mother tongue. But also there's a challenge generally of just the reading and writing in the first place. And there is, we, we have also a voice solution. Um, so you're live in Zambia, but we are working hard to bring it, to bring it live. And basically what we'll, this will do is kind of eliminate that, that challenge of, um, of, of reading and writing, right? Um, you, you can just speak into the phone and you were able to kind of like record your, your voice, um, play back um, audio in mother tongue and things like that. So we've, we've seen certain implementations that kind of like uh, circumnavigate some of these challenges. But yes, um, I mean, literacy levels are also like a, a general concern. Um, in anything, if anyway, you're dealing with a smartphone, it's definitely going to become a problem. But um, what, what we hope is that as, as we move forward, voice technology especially will become a key in like connecting the people who are not, um, uh, who are not able to read and write. Okay. Uh, so let me see, I hope that um, answers your question. Um, if you have any question, uh, if you have any questions, if you're a participant, uh, you're welcome to type the questions in the chat or in the Q&A, and then um, taking advantage of Anthony while he's online uh, would, be, would be very good than uh, reaching out to him all the way from, well, yeah, he's, he's reachable, but still it's, uh, it, it would be nice as well to share your, um, to share your questions if you have any. Um, my, 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 my question also, Anthony, is um, something related to, I think you did mention this as well uh, on, on pricing. Uh, so how, how, how manageable, maybe how affordable is, um, is the service in terms of, uh, especially when setting up and the cost of it for SMEs and, and corporates? Um, how, 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 how manageable, maybe how um, affordable is the service for, for, for corporates and, and SMEs who want to use uh, a platform like maybe a USSD platform to, to set up? Yeah. Um, if, launch, if Launch is able to speak, like it would be awesome for guys to hear her voice as well. <laughs> I think, uh, <laughs> okay, Launch Launch has got, uh, her network is, her connection is bad. Uh, I think she, she stated it in one of the, 
Our connection is bad. She says on and off, but at the moment she's not. Uh, she's not online. She's not online at the moment. Let me let me pull up. Let me pull up the pricing. But generally, um, what we are looking mm-hmm. at is pretty affordable stuff. So if you set up a USSD, for example, on um, on Africa Stocking, we have a shared code which is free, uh, but has like a monthly maintenance cost associated with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's about um, fifty dollars or so. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is something that a, a month you're kind of just like servicing, going along. There's the option of having a dedicated code, uh, which basically means you have, let's say, star eight three five hash as your dedicated uh, number. But then uh, when you're using the shared code, you're sharing a code, an Africa stocking code that's shared, and Many guys have something similar, so something like star 384, star, and then uh, your unique number, and then hash. And basically what that allows you to do is it's a low-cost way for you just to be able to post the USSD um, compared to the version of it. Um, yeah, it's, um, it's, not, it's not too expensive. Uh, for SMSs, it goes um, all the way to, um, let me give you a moment, pull up these, um, again, I can, See the right price. Um, <laughs> okay, um, Launcher, Launcher just joined us. Um, Launcher, we're looking for you. Are you able to, yes. to, to say? Yeah. Hey, George. Okay, all right. Uh, Anthony, Launcher is back online. Awesome. Launcher. Yes. yes. Our pricing for you is. For USSD? Yes. Yeah, so we're trying to, the question is how, how, how affordable, um, how affordable is it for SMEs and, uh, and, 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 and corporates if they want to, and it's just do a setting up and the cost of, uh, the cost of setting up and the cost of just um, onboarding, uh, onboarding the, the, onboarding the solutions to, to using your, onboarding their products or services to using your, to using your, to using platforms like, um, the ones that you that you're trying to the, the solution that you're trying to provide. Yeah, so I I heard uh, Limo talking about shared short code. So I think for mm-hmm. that one, it's 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 like a cheaper version of USSD that we have, and mm-hmm. I think uh, for monthly fees it should be about uh, maybe three thousand quatra somewhere there. Um, mm-hmm. And also we do charge for like session costs, which is like mm-hmm. one quatra per session. Um, what I mean by session is the moment somebody dials your code or your channel, that's a mm-hmm. session. Um, and also setting up, I think it should be 500. Um, mm-hmm. But though for dedicated, it might be quite expensive uh, as compared to shared in that because mm-hmm. it's your code and you are the only one who's using it. Um, so it, it, and you incur all the costs. So it gets so, it's kind of like a comprehensive kind of thing. So I think uh, there's also some setup fee, which should, shouldn't be more than 3000 And you have to pay monthly fees as well. Um, that should be like 4500 4000 or 5000 quacha, somewhere there. Yeah, so that's about it for USSD. And then um, SMS, I think the lowest um, that we have, if you intend to... Uh, maybe push a lot of traffic um, on, I don't know how many volumes that would be, but the lowest uh, cost that we have is about 16 way per SMS. And the highest that we have is 23 way. So it depends on how much, how much you're sending and how much you're receiving as well. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Lord, the, you're the contact person for... Um, for Africa Stocking in Zambia, you are the representative, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you, you can, can type in your you can you can type your details in the in the, in the chat in case maybe people want to uh, connect with you. Okay. Sure. Let me do that now. All right. Okay. Um, at this point, we don't have um, any 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 questions or uh, any questions from the from the attendees. Um, but I will leave it to Anthony if you have any last comments or last words for, for us. Um, yeah, so I think uh, just to remind people to stay safe, um, COVID is real, uh, it's, uh, it's quite, quite intense. So 
uh, yeah, just to remind people to stay safe. Um, at Africa Stalking, we have a um, heavy belief as well in um, supporting developer communities. Um, so if you are a developer or know of a developer or ask your developer um, about, about our services, um, we, we are always trying to find out how we could make our services better for, for, for our customers and for anyone who's interested in using, using us. Um, so reach out to, to Lantier um, or myself at any, at any point in time. Um, yeah, and we'd be, we'd be happy to discuss the matters technology, uh, business design, um, mm -hmm. that will even help you um, uh, figure out what you could do on our platform. We are not just, we're not salespeople, we are actually trying to help you. So um, if, you are, if, you want, if you want, um, if you want us to help you with figuring out how our services fit into your business, reach out to us any, any, any day of the week. Um, or if you just want to talk to us about the future of, of telecommunications, um, we, we, we love talking about it all the time. Yeah, just talking. <laughs> all right, thank you so much, Anthony. Uh, there's, a last, uh, there's, there's a last comment uh, from uh, Lukundo, and Lukundo is, um, or she just, uh, he or she is asking for contact details for the Zambian representative. Uh, Lukondo Launch has just typed in the content details at the, uh, above the uh, just 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 before you you made the comment. Um, so I would just uh, put that back in. So she's the uh, representative for, for 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 Zambia. Well, Anthony, thank you so much for for taking the time to to tell us um, about the uh, about the use of USSD. Awesome. Um, remind myself for the time and also trying to see how best to our SMEs as well to you to 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 use the platform. Awesome. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Also the things that you shared, uh, just a constant reminder that there's I think also the context matters as well, looking at the fact that this is an African context and so it's not I think there's still a lot of people that were missing out on the that were a lot of customers that were missing out, especially when it comes to serving um, marketing or maybe marketing or products who are still Using the uh, uh, feature phone, uh, which we will need um, use of USSD, and those are like I would say that they're ma their majority. So thank you so much for, for sharing your thoughts. Um, yeah, uh, this is uh, someone just saying that um, awesome, awesome, Anthony. Uh, this has been super helpful. Looking forward to more discussions and solutions. Yeah, so that's a, a final comment from um, from 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 um, from Boa. I'd say. Yeah, so thank you so much, Anthony and Notia. Thank you so much for, for, for taking the time as well. And closing off, uh, we'll close off the Hive webinar for, to, for today's session. Uh, you're welcome to follow us on Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn um, at Bongo Hive. Uh, you can also go to our website uh, if you want to hear or uh, tune into more webinars. That's uh, bongohive.co.za. Uh, forward slash webinars, and you will find most of the content. Even the content that, uh, even uh, the, our discussion for this uh, for this for this afternoon, uh, we upload it. Uh, we we'll, we'll upload the the content on on our web on our website. You can also find them on YouTube. So thank you so much, everyone, and look forward to seeing you for our next Hive webinar in 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 two weeks. Let's say. So thank you so much for joining us, and good day. <laughs>